Hello, welcome to another edition of the Pace Report. I'm Brian Pace. I'm here live at the Iridium Jazz Club here in New York City, and tonight I'm interviewing Kenny Garrett, whose latest disc, Sketches of MD, has been receiving lots of positive press. He recorded it with the legendary saxophonist Pharaoh Sanders, but tonight he's also playing the Fender Rhodes as well as playing the soprano as well as his signature, the alto saxophone. Sketches of MD is Sketches of Miles Davis. <laughs> uh, there's a tune called Sketches of MD, but the uh, the album doesn't really represent this Miles. It's just really a, a just a little piece of Miles. You know, we were just vibing on that particular tune. The concept of the CD was really to uh, after I had finished uh, with uh, Beyond the Wall, and it was critically acclaimed. I wanted to document Pharaoh and I doing something, you know, just like on the spur of the moment. And so I decided we play at the Iridium. Let me write some pieces and see what happened. And that was pretty the concept. You know, we just came together. We played a little bit the whole week, and I just put some put some music out. How did you guys link and hook up? I mean, there's got to be a kindred spirit or kindred soul between you guys musically and professionally as well as personal because you hear it on this live album. Well, you know, the first time I met, uh, I knew of Farrah, of course, you know, through Train. But the first time I, uh, I heard Farrell, I was playing at Kimball's East in, uh, in San Francisco, and I was behind the curtain, and someone said, yeah, I came to see Kenny Garrett, and it was Farrell Sanders. I was like, wow, you know, I was excited, you know. And so every time I would see Farrell, and he was playing in New York, he would say, well, bring your horn. I couldn't show up unless I had my instrument. And so I would play his music. And then we did something in, in New York at the Blue Note, and uh, he played my music for the first time. And then I said, wow, I love the way he plays my music because we have a, you know, a similar approach to music, how we hear the music, you know, from a spiritual perspective. And uh, when I decided to do Beyond the Wall, I said, well, I want Pharaoh to play on my CD. Uh, you know, but I want to always try to you know, challenge him to play some, some music that he hasn't played, but at the same time music that I know he would love to play. You know. Why is it that the Iridium has a special sweet spot for you? You like to play here all the time. You could play anywhere. You could play the Blue Note. You could play Dizzy's. But you decided to record and document your time with Pharaoh here, and you play here. Well, you know, I always try to find a place in New York where I can actually call home. Like, for, I had another club that I used to play at all the time. And I think with that, they just give me the flexibility, you know, to come in when I want to play and just, you know, work out what I need to work out. And this is the kind of situation I have here. You know, I just come in when I want to, and I just play. You know, and the people who come down, they know I'm coming to play, so no matter where I am, it's that kind of party, you know. Now, this also, the, the Sketches of MD, is also your first introduction and your debut on the Mac Avenue Records label. This has got to be a, a, a new approach to how Mac Avenue is choosing their artists. I mean, they, they have you, they have Christian McBride. I mean, why did you choose Mac Avenue? Well, first reason, they're from Detroit. <laughs> and I was really just trying to connect you know, back with my roots. And the second thing, I like what they were doing, you know, with their artists, you know. And they had some, uh, some early artists. And I was like, wow, they're, they're, they're still new and they're hungry and they're trying to create something. And they give me, uh, you know, opportunity, you know, to do a lot of different things. So the first one was really just to release sketches of MDD. And, the, you know, soon actually I'll start working on something new for them. <laughs>
weeks ago, we lost an icon in the hip hop community, Guru. Mm. And you happened to record with him, but you've also recorded with Q Tip. What are your thoughts on Guru and also how the hip hop community has embraced jazz artists like yourself and the elder statesmen as far as reintroducing our roots music, our culture to young a younger generation? Well, you know, actually prior to, to playing with Guru, I didn't really know much about him, but being on the road and playing, I got a sense that he, you know, he understood his history. And I think a lot of times with some of the rappers, they are not really connected with their history or jazz musicians. You know, I mean, it, the hip hop and jazz actually mix, I mean, bebop and hip hop, it actually kind of mixes together. So for me, it was just easy. It was just when people say hip hop, I was like, well, that sounds like some funk music I played, you know. Uh, or it sounds like a you know like a, a beat we used to beat on top of the car. So it was anything different to me, and from that that perspective. But what I I liked about Guru is that he was trying to bring musicians into the mix and change it up a little bit. You know the same thing with Q-Tip. I mean you know he was trying to I was working on a CD trying to be more uh, commercial per se, and he was trying to be more art artistic. So it worked out great for us. You know it's kind of you know you you kind of change and you're looking for certain things. It kind of it's like a cycle. It, it flips back around. Then you come back home. Then you kind of leave away, you know, you move away from it. Then you come on back. So that's how I kind of look at life. And I kind of look at, you know, the same thing with Guru and cats like Q-Tip. They're just trying to change it and keep it, you know, keep it real. How did Q-Tip approach you for uh, Kamal the Abstract? Well, you know, actually we've been talking about, uh, I have to tell you, on the record I did, I did a tune called Back Where You Started. It was a spoken word. And actually Q-Tip was supposed to rap on it. It didn't happen at that time. Then we were going to do something kind of like hip-hop jazz. It didn't happen. Then finally we hooked up, and, uh, you, know, he, you know, he called me. I just happened to run into him on the street and said, man, I've been looking for you. I want you to come and play on my CD. And that's what happened. But, you know, we, we knew about each other, but we couldn't catch up, you know, because we were a different clique. <laughs> do it again for another edition of the Pace Report. I'm Brian Pace here at the famed Iridium Jazz Club here in New York City. I'd like to personally thank Kenny Garrett for his time, his hospitality, as well as the staff here at the Iridium. Please visit my website for my past column and my past radio and television interviews at thepacereport.com. That's www.thepacereport.com. Remember, until next time, if it's in the groove, it'll make you move. Peace.